My name is Helga. Um, I am a pelican, a knight, and a royal peer out of the West Kingdom. Uh, and I'm here to talk about building buzz and or the SCA hype squad. Um, so we're gonna be talking about marketing events uh, today. And I'm, I'm happy to front questions and chat with people about like some of the stuff that I do uh, out there mundanely. Uh, I'm a paralegal and an office manager with a business marketing background. Um, and so I try to use a very expensive 2000, like in the 2000s economic crash uh, degree for uh, use in the SCA. Um, and so I have a little bit of mundane, uh, mundane experience doing this too. Um, so my typical class, uh, like 101, raise your hand if you have a question, alt Y raises your hand. I will call on people um, if I don't totally catch that you have raised your hand, please forgive me. Um, you're welcome to also interrupt me and be like, hey, I've had my hand up for a little while. Um, please feel free. Uh, I'm going to stop. There's basically three sections in this class. Um, I'm going to stop at the end of each section so we can take a couple questions if they don't come up during uh, while I'm talking. And at the end, it's going to be like an open source, like, let's chat about this idea. Um, you can throw off the wall stuff at me because uh, I'm here to help you guys in this process. Uh, and also be a resource if you need outside of the class. So if you're if you want to later on come ask me about it, feel free to. Like I always, I'm always down to chat, uh, kind of like event hyping. Uh, and I saw that somebody said, "Do I have a handout?" And yes, let me get you the link real quick. Uh, so the link is posted again in the chat for everybody. It is a Google Doc. Uh, please remember over you can go file, save copy, and then it, that will allow you edit access. So you can directly take notes into this document and keep it for yourself forever. Uh, so there is that. Uh, so with that, I'm going to roll into the class unless anybody has anything they want to add before you turn me loose with talking way too much for the next hour. All right, cool. Um, with that, we're going to talk about three sections. The first section is reach, uh, reach and target audience. The second uh, section is hype, because hype matters. Uh, and the third one is we're going to talk directly about media use in the SCA. Um, so the first one, reach in your target audience. Uh, this is actually key for events and something that we forget a lot of the time. The SCA is very inclusive. We have a very big umbrella. Um, and when marketing, we actually need to set aside our very big umbrella for a little while and look at the audience that we're actually trying to bring to the event. Um, this is huge. You need to understand what your audience wants. Why are they showing up to an event? Why is this person going to come to your event? Spend the gas money, the time, everything else like that. That's actually key. Um, and so, and then being able to articulate it to them on whatever platform that you're on to say, hey, this event is worth coming to. Um, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in a really weird millennial problem. Um, one of the things that the SCA is still trying to adapt to is we lived off word of mouth for a very, very long time. We had the page, we had very little source information about what events were going on. We just showed up assuming what we wanted was going to be there. That has rapidly changed in our mundane social climate. The market, like my generation and the, new, the next generation will not spend the gas money to get somewhere unless they know it's worth the gas money because you only have so much gas money to get. So if I'm driving 14 hours to a big war, there best be a bunch of fighting. Um, and so this is something that we all need to address um, of the SCA is no longer word of mouth. Um, we have actually kind of run out of our internal renown uh, is what I like to call it, is we we ran out of the renown because we stopped maintaining it. And so now we have to go into a generation where we maintain it by being very open and honest about what's going on at events. So this is how we get our target audience, is we're very open and honest about what is going on at events uh, and how to get them there. Um, then we make it happen because that's how we regain renown within the society and with our new members. Um, second thing, as the person that is either the autocrat or the hype squad for the event, you need to understand what you actually want out of the event. If it is not a crown or a coronation, why are you running it? 
how is the event feeding you? Because if you're excited about the event, you're going to let other people know that you're excited about the event. And so this is a key thing uh, in understanding and keeping your own boundaries about being a hype squad and being the marketer for the event. Um, and a lot of people skip this point. They just expect that they can apply like some super, like I'm super excited about this. And you're really not you will actually set yourself up to fail. So please double check and make sure that when you're stepping on to be a hype squad for an event, you're stepping onto an event that feeds you because that will feed your audience. Like, please, please be careful with this one because this is how we actually create burnout accidentally in the people we ask to help market. Um, the next, you know, a quick one, we're going to be going over this in much, de uh, much more detail later is how do you present your information Remember that you are now, the SCA is multi-generational. We all process between generations. We process information and need different sets of information to make it worthy. And so when you're setting up your event and setting up the information that you're putting out, you want to make sure that you're hitting the visual, the emotional, and the data because, and doing it in a very clean way. So people that want way more information can find it if they follow like to the event page and everything else like that. Or the people that are just like, they wanna know when, where, and how, like can just get that like this. Um, and it takes a little bit of practice, um, but really if you think about like bullet pointing a lot of stuff, if like you're making, you're making an event outline um, and making it super clean. Um, think in like, and one of the thing, the tricks that I use is I am dealing with an emotional 16 year old and I need to tell him to do the dishes. If I can describe my event in a very clean way that then gets it across to him, I've started in the right spot. Um, and that is not, that makes it so you are giving the information, presenting it cleanly, and then making an action forward. It's a very weird way of thinking about it, but it seems to work. Um, so, the second part of this is now that you have assessed your audience, you've assessed what you can do, and you've kind of looked at like how you're gonna present the information. The next part is, can you expand your audience? Do you want to expand your audience? So you have an ANS event. Uh, and so this is this is the very typical thing. Uh, and I'm gonna bring it up within the SCA. This is not meant to be derogatory at all. It's a very typical thing that like an ANS event comes up and somebody goes, but what about fighting? Well, well what about fighting? <laughs> but can you, can you add fighting? You can very easily say no. Um, an event does not need to be all encompassing. Um, if you decide you want to include, include that, it's very easy to add somebody else in that can then autocrat that section. Um, sub, sub people underneath you to deal with stuff in that hype squad, very, very key. Um, I actually do this with meat and beets. Uh, I run all the heavy stuff. I then have somebody that deals with ANS and I have somebody else that deals with food. Like, I don't want to deal with food. I don't want to deal with ANS because trying to wrangle all the cats to get my, my heavy fighter teachers there is it takes up so much time that if I was trying to do the other things, they would fail. Uh, and so that's the big thing is do we want to expand our target audience? How do we expand our target audience? And do I need to bring somebody else on to do it? Or do I politely tell them all to kick rocks? Um, always polite in everything you do. That's one of the big ones. But you can say no, and that's okay. Because even a small event that is very, very hyped for your target audience is going to have better feedback at the end than an event that got too big and didn't have enough like control into it. And so your people are kind of just like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so this is where I have a big note in there that says check for scope creep. Make sure you're not people pleasing. Make sure that you are knowing your, you know, your boundaries and what you're presenting. That's really, really key to actually a good hype squad and like being very clear about your event. And if you have a problem with a people pleaser, like I have a people pleasing uh, mentality, like I want all my people to be happy. I have a background. I'm going to check in with my snarky friend. Um, behind the scenes and I'll be like, hey, somebody brought me this idea for the event and I'm kind of debating on it. And literally she will just be like, hard pass. You're already stressed. Fuck off. Um, I should have put a warning label. I cuss, by the way. Um, but having your friends behind the scenes to check 
for your availability to be like hyped about an event is actually really big. So always have your safety buddy for scope brief. Um, here's a big one also is do not wait to be asked by your audience for information. Uh, they should never have to seek it out. Um, this is caveat on there. There's always gonna be somebody that asks you, hey, where is the event going on? It's on the page. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the event is set up, that you can do that. So you're always gonna have your location. You're always gonna have your timeline. You're always gonna have the basic information out there from the get-go, even if it's not totally filled out. Uh, this is something that we wait too long to do in the SCA, especially for teaching events, is we'll be like, oh, we'll post a class schedule later when it's finalized. No, post a class schedule. I don't care if it literally has time, slot, si time slots and everything is blank. And you go edit that event for the next 30 days as you fill those in because people actually want structure and they will go back and check all the time. Um, and one of the biggest turnoffs that we find in the SCA is waiting for the last minute to publish stuff. So people don't know if they're gonna give up their weekend or not. So this is, this is a big one. Publish early, publish often, and just make edits. And then make a big deal about making the edits. Like, oh my God, have you seen this instructor we just got to come join us? Oh, this is great people will then go back and look at the entire schedule and see who else is added on. Um, so this is also going to go into asking teachers um, this is, or asking attendee, uh, attendance. Um, you have to remember that, again, we're going to go back to the, if you pretend that the SCA renown is spent on, uh, there is no word of mouth anymore, um, you need to go ask people to show up. Like, don't wait for your teachers to come to you. If you say, hey, I'm holding a teaching event, you wanna know what your volunteer ratio is gonna be? About 5% of what you want. You're gonna have a couple teachers come forward because they're very used to teaching, uh, but a lot of people are drilled with a mundane Western idea of humility. And this is like, this is mundane. This goes back to a huge rant that I have about toxic humility. Um, but most people are not actually going to put themselves forward as teachers um, because they feel that it is unhumble of them to put them uh, put out there. So as part of the hype squad, you need to go reach them. You need to go after them. You need to ask them. You also need to ask your attendants to show up. If you're hype squatting a crown or a coronet list, guess what? Having one of your scribes do a scroll that you can then scan and mass produce and then ship out. You want to know what's going to make me show up to a crown event when I get a scroll in the mail that says you're invited. Like it takes some time and you can bribe all your friends. Like no joke, I'm buying pizza for everybody and beer and we are sending out 200 of these damn things. Um, and you will see a huge amount of, of people show up just because they got that thing. Um, and mind you, do not over budget yourself on this. Do not like that is that is an extreme example, but it is a very good example for crown. Uh, we did it for crown entrance um, and we had over 100 people show up. Um, and so that those little things are huge. Uh, and remember that personal invite makes a person feel wanted and to be there and they then become invested in the event. Um, and they also become invested in the success of the event. Also, whoever corrected my spelling, I love you. Okay, so is there any questions on this section? This was a very kind of broad overview uh, and a lot of the like, hey, this is how you emotionally manipulate your audience after you've ID'd them. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Right. Um, so I put it in the chat. I am a super planner and I would like to have my entire schedule and all my plans completely firm on the website three months in advance. That's how I want to do it. But my local marshals and all the people I know would like to confirm and finalize their plans the day before the event. How do I get these people to like confirm and finalize something, I don't know, more than 10 days in advance? How do I, how do I help bridge that gap? All right, so 
this is this is a this is a fun one, uh, and this is this is going to go right into welcome to the fact that uh, Helga is an emotional manipulator to the max, uh, because to be a marketer you are a little bit. Um, I will take everybody that has finalized and I will publish them and do the hype squad. Like, hey, I need you to send a picture that you're doing this class. I need to send I need you to send a picture. I'll do the write up for you. Hey, interruption two. Um, so. I need you to send a photo. I'll do a little bio and a write-up. And you want to know what is going to happen? All those other people that are waiting to finalize or anything else like that are all of a sudden going to be like, whoa, hey, the other teachers are being talked about. Like, well, I want that. Well, cool. Finalize your class. Finalize what's going on. And then I can do this. But until you get me that information, I'm not publishing you. Um, and this, this adds a little bit of, again, you're going to get people to access early. Um, also, here's, here's a thing that I'm a little cutthroat about, um, is I develop backups. So always, if you, especially, and this is, this is kind of like, this is going to end up falling into the ANS slash like more like the, the class side of events that we have uh, versus uh, crowns and cornets and all that. So we're, we're talking a lot more specifically about small events and or like the, hype, the, the events that really need hype um, is I always double down. Um, so I have extra teachers in the wings where I will write them months in advance and be like, right now we have a roughed out schedule. Um, I don't actually have an extra slot right now, but I would love for you to be a backup. Typically you have two teachers drop. It's two teachers per every 10, by the way, that will drop. Um, and if you assume that ratio and then build in backups to that ratio, you tell all your other teachers, if you have not gotten me your information however many days out. So you can pick five days, you can pick three days, you can pick 24 hours. I will replace you. Um, and this is a little bit cutthroat, but what it does is it makes your stress less. It also makes it so your students have the information they want before they get in the car and drive. Um, and this is, this is a little bit of generational training and this is a little bit of SCA training because this is going from the idea that, oh, we just sell everything on Renown. People know like what's going to go on at this event down to, nope, they don't. And they're not getting in their cars until they know what's going on. Um, and so, hey, he's eating his food bowl. Two. That's three. Three. Yep. Uh, we had one right before the class went off. Um, so that's, that's something that will help. And this also turns into a training thing that happens within your kingdom. Um, and so like the West Kingdom, most people know if I'm running a meet and beat, if you haven't gotten me your information five days before the event, I'm replacing you. Like it's just known. Um, and so that's one of those things that as it goes on and you'll get, you'll get a couple people that are a little pissy about it. And you're just like, I would be happy to host you for the next one. Or there is these, this many opportunities coming up in the future about this, but our students need to know. Um, and that's actually a huge thing. When you put the students first, people stop actually fighting you about it. So does that, does that answer the question on that one? I, sw I swear I'm gonna get hate mail after this one. Like this, this class, I'm being so just cutthroat about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's cutthroat. I mean, that sounds entirely reasonable and there's no reason you can't say all of that with a smile. Bless their hearts. Yeah. Exactly. Teach you a Meridian phrase, bless your heart. Yeah, um, and so, also, one of the things that I'm going to point out here for teachers on this one is um, because while I'm cutthroat, I also want to try to provide a platform for teachers. And this kind of came up with the expectations thing. So I'm just going to I'm going to put a nail in it right now is I try to bring somebody on that is more like so I always work in a team. I try to never work alone because team makes makes it so if I'm having a communication problem with a person, I can tap somebody else in to be like, I'm not communicating with this person well. Maybe maybe you'll help. But also I try to bring somebody on that is an experienced teacher that is willing to give their time to newer teachers that are possibly panicking. So, cause that, that is the biggest holdback on somebody that is like, oh, I'll get you, I'll get you my bio later. I'll get you this later. I'll get you this later. Thank you, love. Um, I'll get you this down the road um, is sometimes you have to go and check in with them and be like, hey, are you not feeling prepared? And can I help you 
prepare for this class so I can post the information. Because right now I feel like there's a disconnect or there's something going on. Um, and if you take the time to do that with some of your back, your teachers that are like, I'll get it to you later, I'll get it to you later. It might be that they're panicking about doing this. And if you give the time to check in with them, all of a sudden they're going to thrive because now you've given them a way to move forward. So sometimes when you have that balk happen, when you have the pan, you know, like the panic button gets hit or they seem a little stubborn, it might actually be fear of teaching. It might be fear of commitment. So give them a way to move forward. Give them a way to re-participate in what's going on with new information and a little bit of help. I don't, I don't have a cool microphone. The answer is, it's my night, Marshall. <laughs> Tell him if he gets shit in two months in advance, you'll buy him a six pack of beer because nights are bribable. Like, 100%. Like, I'll tell you, um, this is where I call smashing the hero button. Um, the knights have the biggest hero button. The pelicans have the second largest hero button. The laurels have the most precise hero button. And the mods are getting, like, the, the mods are getting close to the knights, by the way. They're developing as a peerage. They've got, they've got a pretty fucking large hero button. Um, and so this is the thing. All of them are bribable with smashing the hero button and a little bit of food reward. Um, I will tell you, everybody is motivated by food. You just got to figure out what food it is. And sometimes it's really worth being like, cool. I understand that you are not working on a schedule right now. If you give me this information, because I need you to give me this information, I will drop ship you a six pack of fucking beer, dude. And then the problem solved. There's a food reward. Like it is nothing but click and treat sometimes. Remember that. Okay, so moving, is there any other questions on this section before I move to the next one now that I have just made myself sound like an ass? I was just going to say, it's, it's got to be the good beer. Too. Yeah, it's got to be the good beer. You let them name the beer. Uh, I cannot pronounce the name with the hand up right now. Oh, it just went away. Um, the question from, I'm going to guess, is Faishin. I Yeah. Know, was it, are exceptions ever justified for you? Yes, sometimes exceptions are justified. Um, so is dropping. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, for as harsh as I'm talking right now, there are going to be times where you need to make exceptions for people. They have life coming up, everything else like that. This falls into the good communication category of you are always as a hype squad person going to have to be a better communicator than anybody else you're dealing with. Um, and, but you're also going to give them avenues for like, cool, you're only going to, you, you've got 48 hours before your class and you're going to get me your time. You're going to get me your schedule. That's fine. Like I understand right now that life is going on and everything else like that. Make exceptions. So part of the thing is hold your boundaries, but understand what exceptions that you will, you will accept before you replace somebody. Um, it's, and this is all dependent on you as the hype squad person or as the leader of this group. Um, and you will understand that the more events you do, like the more events you do and like the more times you hype squad stuff, um, so that's, um, does that answer the question? Yes, that answers the question. I just was wondering how you uh, rank the importance of being flexible with not being a doormat. Yeah, uh, so being flexible is key to continuing to have events go on, just understand your lines in them. So, you know, where does your flexibility break? 24 hours before the event, my flexibility is gone. Like, you can show up, I'll make a space for you if you show up, but I'm not marketing you at this point. Like, you've just, you've wasted my time. Um, but beyond that, like calling in and saying like, look, my life just happened. 100% flexible about that. Like, oh my God, take care of your mundane life. I'll figure it. This is the reason why I have backup teachers. I'll dial up that backup teacher and be like, I'm doubling the beer bounty show up. Like, so there's, there's all those things is I will always allow a mundane, uh, a mundane reason to override an SCA commitment. Doesn't matter. Like they could call me like two hours before the event. I'll figure it out. And I'm never going to badmouth them about it. Also, by the way, never badmouth your teachers that fail you. Um, we're just going to have this like little PSA real quick. Never badmouth somebody that fails you at an event. Never badmouth a teacher that doesn't show up. Never badmouth anything else. Take personal notes behind the scenes that, hey, they kind of suck at commitment. Like maybe don't have them be your, your headliner if you want. Um, but do not shit talk the people that fail for some reason. Want to know why? Because then everybody else is going to assume that you will do that if they have something come up. They will 
assume, like it, it is flat out that they will assume that you are actually going to be a really hard person to work with. So shut your mouth on that one because you will screw your own ability to market if you make somebody else look bad. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to the next section so I can actually get through all of this because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be close guys. I'm sorry. Uh, so hype, we're going to talk literally about hype. We've gone over some of this, so I might breeze through a little bit of it so we can get to questions about it. Marketing 101, the target needs to know, or the target audience needs to know what is happening and be reminded. This is when you set up a schedule of marketing. Like this is when you set up a schedule of like throwing out your media posts. Um, I do this in a, uh, in a descending order. So like four months out, I'm going to post every two to three weeks. Like, hey, remember this event's going on or I'm gonna update. So like when I, when I update the classes, I'm gonna do an update schedule. So every two weeks I'm gonna post, hey, we've added in these extra classes or we've had these teachers commit, woo, yay. Um, and then as the event gets closer, they will, my posting will increase. Um, and so I, I try to never do more than once a week, by the way. Like that's one of those things that like, you can do that on your personal wall. So we're talking specifically Facebook, by the way, don't, post to your kingdom page every day about an event. People are gonna get annoyed and actually not show up. Um, you can post once a week or because of how Facebook refreshes, you go down and you find your post, you edit it, and then you add a comment to it and it jumps it back up to the top of the page. So this is a huge tool that uh, most of us hate Facebook algorithms, but however, you can abuse them. Um, and this is one fantastic way to abuse them is go add a comment, it will jump it back up and restart the conversation. So if you feel that you're kind of flooding your kingdom page or your principality page or your baronial page, just restart conversation in the comments and then you're not reposting, you're just adding information. Um, so talk about what's going on. Uh, I will use my personal page or a Facebook page for this all the, oh, sorry, uh, Jocelyn, I see that you have a hand up. Yeah, I tend to flood Facebook far too much because I have a weekly theme that recurs. Do you think I should do comments or just keep flooding once a week and then boost it midweek with a comment? Um, so it depends. So you have like a weekly show going on or a weekly... It's uh, a scribal event where we host shows or demos or lectures. It, it changes every single week, but it's a live event. It's not a recorded event. Oh, no, you're totally fine. Um, so when you have a changing topic, mm -hmm. so you, you basically have mini events every month, uh, you know, every week, that's a new post. That's fine. Um, the only thing that I will warn against with weekly posts where you have a different event going on, spend the time to make a new image for it. Oh God, I use the same image every time as I was thinking. No, don't use the same image because that's going to actually make it feel, excuse me, that's going to make it feel like you're reposting the same thing. You oh, need to cool. give people a different visual and mm -hmm. that will reduce the flood. All right, cool. Thank you. Welcome. So uh, talk about what's going on. Uh, so in all your hype hype squad posts you want to make sure that you're adding information or like highlighting information uh you know specific characteristics of the event like cool we are we have a class on embroidery or like at this coronation we're doing a toy drive like little things like that also remember to highlight the communities within the bigger events so if like when you're doing a crown or a coronation you want to hype the little things going on. The little things are actually what draws in. We all understand that that crown is changing hands and I wanna be a part of that, but what's the other things going on? Like, is there a toy drive? Are we doing a largesse contest? Are we doing, you know, is there a feast going on? Do we have notes from the feastocrat? Um, those little things that are a party event are the reason why you draw in extra people. Um, and that's one of those big, those big things. Um, here's one of the fun ones. Are you hosting games? Is there going to be a game room? Is there um, a room for the kids? Is there a room for the teenagers? Is there like, are we doing ANS? Is there fighting going on? Those little things, and you can pick one. So if you've got your event set like three to four months out, pick one of those each time and highlight it. And by what I mean is highlight is you're going to do a little sentence about it, or you're going to change that image that you're going to post with it uh, to reflect that piece of information. And then like all the other information can be stacked underneath it. So like largesse contest, kids room, game play date. Yes, there's gonna be coronation. Um, 
And so that's, that will help because what you're going to do is you're going to find that you grab two, maybe three more people because you did that, but two or three more people stack up really, really fast. Um, and two or three more people talk to their friends and they may drag a couple other friends with them. Um, and so this is a very, it's a very stacking, like it is uh, nibbled to death by ducks. Uh, so, you know, again, you're going to highlight what teachers will be there. Uh, and event participation. So talk about talk about those little things. Give give those little things a highlight. Um, it also makes those people that are running those things. It highlights them. It gives them a little bit of time and bandwidth and celebrates them. So if you have your, especially, uh, I'm going to harp on this for a moment. If you have somebody that's running a kids coordination stuff, I will put their face on that image because our, our youth coordinators are really, really important. And so I want people to know who they are. Um, and I want people to know that that's actually going on and who's involved in it. Um, and so, but I'll also do that for like games. Like if somebody's running a games room, heck yeah, send me a photo that you like. You're going right on that banner page. Let me celebrate you and let me let the kingdom know who you are. Um, and again, that's also gonna make them invested. That's gonna tell them, look, what you're doing is worthy. So now they're more invested in the event that you are, you know, you are creating or hyping for. Uh, getting friends to help. This is a key one. I should have like put this in bold. Um, getting friends to help. Don't ever think that you're a one person show. You are never a one person show. As soon as you feel you're a one person show, you are actually setting yourself up to fail. Um, marketing is not about one person creating success for an event. Marketing is about one person starting the snowball rolling. Um, and I will create teams for different events um, that have specific areas of like, this is what you're talking about and this is what you're helping me hype. Um, I will make it so all information flows through a specific person. I don't need it to flow through me. I don't, I just need to flow through specifically one person so we don't create a flood of information. Again, we don't want to drown our audience in information. We want to make sure they have enough that they are like hungry for what's going on. Um, and so having one key person and then a couple people underneath, gathering images, making banners, you know, organizing your teachers, making sure that sites going off. And then at the end of the event, make an image of all of them and being like, cool, this was the hype squad that made this event happen. Again, they'll be invested more the next time. Um, oh yeah, ask for help in uh, presenting and pushing the event. Uh, this is a key one. Like if you're creating a Facebook event, wanna guess what? You are limited in the number of people you can invite, but so are all your friends. So ask people, directly ask people, hey, I'm autocratting this event. I could really use help pushing this event. Can you get into the invites and invite your friends? Like, can you help me hype this up a little bit? That small thing will increase your circulation exponentially. Um, ask for people to invite people. I just covered that. Uh, ask for teachers and participants and populists to post pictures of themselves. Again, we are very visual creatures. We want to use that visualization. If they're worried about doing it, create the image for them. Like, be like, I will be your hype squad. I've got the tech. I'm going to make the image for you. Like, can you go post this now, please? Um, asking will get you a long way. Um, also, posting to their page for a greater reach. Uh, one of the things the SCA tends to do is we think about everything in this little microcosm. So, like, if we make an event page, all information must flow through that event page. Wrong. All information must be contained within that event page. People can then grab information out of that and post it on their personal wall. Like, hey, I'm teaching SCA Hype 101. Like, come join me. Here's the invite link. Um, like, have them do that. Get your teachers excited about what's going on. Get your autocrat staff excited about what's going on. And remember that you can use your personal page as a secondary marketing platform all the time. Like, and I highly recommend it anyways, because you're going to find people don't see the events sometimes. However, when it shows up on your page and it shows up on so-and-so's page and somebody else's page, all of a sudden you have this like nice little hum of what's going on and people are now talking about the event. They're asking questions and then they'll go find the event page so they can directly ask you what the heck's going on. How do I get involved? So that's a really, it's a really good way of doing that. And this is, again goes into like build your hype squad, then use your hype squad. Um, in-person announcements. Uh, this right now is not valid for the SCA. However, 
when the SCA gets going again, this becomes very, very valid. Ask for time in court. Ask for time in small courts and large courts. You will pull people from small events easier than you will pull people from large events, just so you know. Um, because like baronial events, principality events, those events don't tend to get a lot of hype squad at them. They go, th they go through court, they do their awards, and then they go. Um, and I found this across like the known world. I've gotten very spoiled in, in joining many, many kingdoms courts. Um, and the smaller the court, typically the less like raw, raw we're doing this event. Uh, it should be the reverse. Um, and here's like, so you as the main hype squad leader do not need to drive to every baronial event. You need to contact somebody in that barony and ask them and give them like, this is the event. Can, can I bribe you into hyping this for me? Like, I can't make this event. I would really love to, but you know, can you do an announcement in court? Cause I would really like to make sure that this, this information gets to your barony that this is going on. Um, rules for court announcements, short, sweet, and loud. Um, who, what, where, when, and why. Beyond that, walk off like a hero and go from there. They'll come find you for more information. We lose people in court announcements after two minutes. You have two minutes to get all your information to them. After that, you're talking to dead air. So practice your announcements. Go stand in front of a mirror, walk through it. Don't walk into court cold with an announcement when you're trying to hype. It's you will trip. You will try to add information in. There's other things. So just practice it a couple times, give yourself a script, go from there and then walk into court like you're on some TV show, give that announcement and stride out with your cape flying and people will come find you for more information. I promise you they will come and ask you like, hey, I heard your announcement, I have questions. Can I ask you a question? Give them your time. Don't shove them off, give them your time. So, uh, do, do, do. Marketing is following consistency. Uh, so this is one big thing, consistency, consistency, consistency for your information. Get your, like, if you have a schedule of, if you have like a weekly sh uh, show right now um, or like a bi-weekly show, make sure that you are posting almost at the same time every week. Make sure that your announcements are going out. Um, this is abusing the Facebook algorithm out there. When you post at random times, your algorithm changes who sees it. So if you consistently post, what ends up happening is your algorithm actually starts putting it into more people's feeds. Facebook is dumb. You can actually, and by the way, you can look up on Google how to manipulate Facebook algorithms. Go use all those cheat notes. Like go spend some time, read up on cheating on how to screw with the Facebook algorithms because you'll learn real quick. You never actually put a, you never embed a link in your initial post. Never, ever, ever do that. By the way, your initial post is an image and words. And then you say in that on that link in comments, because if you put that link in there, you get a third of the bandwidth it will give you if you put if you didn't have that link. Oh my God, I can almost swear. That's exactly what I realized just the other week. Yep. Like if I put a link to my thing, it suppresses how many people see it. Yep. I think there's, links are bad. Yeah. So abuse Facebook, learn the tricks, um, because that way you can get everything else going out there. Always put the link in the comments, never in the body. Also images circulate better than just text. Uh, so any, this is, that's on the hype point. And do you have any questions here or shall I move on to, you know, media? Cause we kind of like roll, started to roll into media, but I want to make sure. Uh, Don't he has a question chat. So I just wanted to make one comment, speaking as your principal, Harold. If you have an announcement and you are too shy or too quiet to, to make that announcement, feel free to hand it off to the Herald. We will gladly do it for you. Okay, overcoming the challenges of not knowing enough people to make an effective team. Um, one, I could probably do an entire class on this. 
Um, but part of the thing, an effective team can be you and one other person. It can be you and your safety buddy that is telling you rules until you build a better, until you build a bigger, not a, not a better squad, because you'd be, you'd be shocked how much people can get done with just one person. Um, so you can start with you and your safety buddy. And then as you get to know people, because people will come find you when you start hype squatting events, by the way, like they will be like, how do you do this? Like, can I be involved? Can I help at all? Um, and so you'll get to know people as you start doing this, but you can start with you and your safety buddy or like your sanity check buddy is actually really what it should be called. Um, and so that's the start of the challenge is so you safety buddy, and then somebody's going to volunteer. You're going to get to know that volunteer. You're going to get to know their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I keep a Google doc on the people I work with. So I know their strengths and weaknesses and I'll ask them, do you like doing announcements in court? Do you like helping with social media posts? Do you like making images? Um, I'll also reach out. If I'm burnt out, I reach out to the, the big broad universe and say, hey, I'm helping with hype squad stuff, but I could really use somebody that has knowledge in X, Y, or Z uh, to come be a part of this team. And you'll find that people will quietly volunteer versus publicly volunteer where you'll get a message be like, I like making images. Can I come help you make images? Hell yes, you can. Do not nitpick what do they give you. You can develop them further down the road, but if somebody volunteers, you take that volunteer for the absolute gift of gold they are. Um, use their stuff. Go from there. Appreciate them for the time. Remember that we are an entirely volunteer organization. So telling somebody that's not good enough is how to burn your team out real fast. Like you can do feedback where, you know, you can ask, okay, cool. Do you want feedback or can we, can we tweak this just a little bit? Everything else is amazing. Um, and go from there and you will develop a working relationship with a lot of people that have some really, really good backgrounds and talents. Um, amusingly enough, Elsie and I use each other as sanity checks all the time. Um, they, both of us are each, each other's sanity buddies. Um, and also both of us are like, oh yeah, this is totally going to screw you. Have fun with it. Um, and so, but that's part of it is so building your team takes time and it takes a little bit of reaching out. If you're shy, go find a weaponized extrovert, i.e. like me, um, and say, hey, you like people really like kind of flock to you. Um, can... Can we sit down and talk? I don't want to talk around a bunch of people. Like, own, own your stuff. I am an introvert. I need an extrovert. Um, but I would like to do this in an introvert fashion. So, i.e., we need to go over here and talk, not in this group. Um, and that will help you a lot. Um, and you will find that us extroverts are like, oh, my God, you want us to speak in public for you? Give me a script right now. Um, and then you have that part of your hype squad covered. Like there is my weaponized extrovert being that in court for me. And I do not need to go to court. And now they are, they're, they are fulfilled in life. You're giving away our extroverted secrets. Oh, dude, I abuse extroverts like nobody's business. Uh, is there any, did I miss any other questions? Does that answer the question about growing, growing your team? a little bit in some other other ways. And also I'm totally happy to go over that one privately too. Um, if anybody wants to talk offline about like build, you know, like how tools in building a team um, because that is a huge conversation uh, and I'm always happy to eat on it. I have a question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, when you um, like put together an event, you know, obviously it's a really good idea to plan things and kind of make sure you know who and what and everything's gonna do. I expect that uh, putting together a plan for the marketing and getting the word out there is probably might be a helpful thing too. Um, is that true? And if um, so, what are some tips you can give us about how to, you know, make sure we're all on the same page uh, in our in our promotional efforts? Uh, start early and six months. Um, so if you are trying to plan an event, your break point is six months out. If you haven't figured out that you want an event to go off six months down the road, shove it out another six months, get people involved um, because you should be hitting the go button at six months where it's like, cool, we have a site, we have contracts, we have everything else like that. Um, and this falls into at about three months. I like my events put together by three months because that way I have it in the page. I have it online. I have everything else like that. Um, so, but if you're talking like conceptualizing an event, like I would like to do this event, start talking about that don't ever talk about it on a short timeline. Like I want to do this event in three months, not going to happen. 
it's it's a lot of pressure i'd like to do this event in six months probably doable a little bit hard i'd like to do this event nine months or next year like oh that's great cool and you get people that are interested throw them into a facebook group or throw them into whatever group works best for everybody to communicate email chain like those things and get them spitballing on what the event idea is for you and for them that way you have your core people you have your autocrat you have your hype squad you have whatever other sub managers you need all on the same page and having those conversations about the event before you release it into the wild because no plan survives contact with the populace the royals or a puppy just doesn't happen um, and so if you have the same idea, when you release it into the wild, you all can adapt in the same way. Also, keep those chats behind closed doors. Like if you if you have your team, that is a closed door team for a little while. Well, but until that event starts going like way public um, and you need to handle stuff in a public manner, those your team should have a safe space, to, you know, safe space to talk about issues coming up to talk about you know stuff that's been presented um that way you all can again make it you could even have disagreements don't ever have public disagreements by the way like that's the quickest way to undermine your own event like if somebody actually like publicly is like mer, 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 about an event you'd be like hey i sent you a private pm can we can we talk about this offline unless it's a legitimate like you will occasionally get some legitimate concerns that you want to deal with publicly do not deal with your crew in a public manner about disagreements like deal with it behind the scenes and go forward because sometimes people actually need to give you emotional feedback about what's going on or how this event is affecting them. And you want to make sure that you're giving them space to express it at you, especially while an event is developing. Um, this will help crew burnout and this helps hype squad burnout because you want to make sure that they feel heard. So they then have a space to continue to grow within the event. And then they go forward and hype because no one's going to hype if they're burnt out on doing an event and feel like they need to do it by rote. Does that answer all of that? Because that was a lot of info real quick. Uh, yes, I believe it did. Because there was, okay. um, there was uh, you kind of covered a couple of different topics there, which was yeah. which is pretty good, but you brought it back together. So Okay, cool. Thank I you. just wanted to make sure. So sorry. Like I was just like, mm, that's a really broad question. So I'm going to like run around the rabbit, rabbit warren of my head in this. Yeah, I mean, it's just I'm a big fan of making plans and then, you know, people can adjust their plans and go from there kind of thing. So, yeah. I and I, as I said, I like to idea. I like to have the idea six months out and my crew in place. All right. So we're going to go over media and I've got like, y'all have another 10 minutes with me. I'm going to go through media uh, pretty quick because we've touched on a lot of it um, already. It's it, this is a very mixed thing. Sorry, guys. Um, and then I'll open it for questions and I'll hang out for probably another 15 minutes afterwards uh, when we give the, the bell of like, hey, there's other classes to go do. Um, if you want to hang out for a couple of minutes, I'll just take open questions and we can geek off for like 15, 20 minutes and then I will release you into the wild. Um, media, make a Facebook event, make a Google Calendar entry, figure out whatever other platform you want on. Uh, images are Instagram. Uh, Twitter is kind of, I, I hate marketing on Twitter. I'm not a huge thing. Twitter is kind of an emotional, like you can hype squat on Twitter, but it's really hard to get actual physical information out on it. Um, and so that one's pretty much like, I'm going to post, I'm going to post a little bit about what's going on. Here's a link where you can find what's going on. Um, but Instagram is great for the visuals. Um, and you can embed just enough information that say, Hey, go check it out on your kingdom calendar. Like, you know, the West kingdom calendar on this date, you can find more information. Um, Instagram is fantastic for that. Uh, Facebook is a great platform for live chats and quick updates. Uh, your Google calendar entry is the same. It is cut and paste. Like anything that you put in a Facebook thing, you can cut and paste it and drop it into a Google calendar so people can add it to their calendar. Um, your kingdom website and calendar is going to kind of be key. Uh, in the West, we do not have it linked to our Google calendars yet. Some kingdoms do. Um, and so you can make, you can kind of kill two birds with one stone there. Um, your calendar entry should match all the other entries. Facebook is going to create the most noise. So Facebook is always the one that you can at the drop of a hat update and at the drop of a, you know, just kind of manipulate it all you want all the time. Um, make sure that you are going through um, 
your kingdom's series and section of what needs to happen to have your Facebook event be official. Like you want your Facebook event official because then it shows up on all the kingdom feeds. So make sure to check your social media officer. Most kingdoms have a social media officer right now. They will walk you through how to get it on there um, and then just poke them. Like, be like, hey, can you just make the event and make me a, make me a host and then I can do all the editing. I just need you to create the event. Um, do, do. Sorry, I'm reading my notes real quick. We already gone over, make it consistent. Uh, one of the things that you wanna answer, there's always questions that come up that we should answer right out the gate. Is the site dog friendly? Are there youth activities? Is there a food plan? Is there any restrictions to site? Is it a dry site? Can we not drive on the grass? Do you need to bring something? Um, are we worried about sprinklers? You know, little things like that. Um, and so you wanna make sure that that information is consistent across all platforms. You're still gonna get asked it. Just remember, you're gonna get asked. Don't get annoyed. Never tell somebody you didn't read the event invite, did you? Like, we're all gonna think it behind the scenes where we're just like, mm. however, just politely respond. Yo, this is, this is the answer, but you can now cut and paste it as many times as you need to. Um, Directions and address are a huge one. We tend to accidentally leave those out all the time on Facebook. Like, make sure your link is make sure your link is good. And when we get back into in-person events, make sure your address is good. Um, and the address you post, click it on Facebook. Make sure to go through your own event and and that all links work, so nobody has to tell you that it doesn't. Because Facebook occasionally just jacks up addresses. Um, Fred and Rob Pilga, yes. I just wanted to let you know that we are running out of time. Ah, yes. Uh, and then uh, Ma uh, Mallory had her hand up. Oh, I was just going to say uh, one time I had an event that ended up in Central America because of where Facebook took the address. Yeah, so just check your stuff. Um, and with the last eight minutes, I'm gonna blast through this so you guys can go to your other classes because Elsie has rocked building this event um, and all her crew. Oh, I'm so impressed with all of you guys. Um, images, we're gonna talk about images real quick. Uh, images are key to everything. Humans are very visual creatures. Uh, we do not live by sound. We do not live by uh, smell, amusingly enough. Uh, we live by the images that are plastered in front of us. Make them clear do not like we all want to use those images where it's like the war scene and everybody is crashing together and it's like you know it's the big rah rah movie thing look at movie posters look at billboards all of that that is the feel you want to mimic uh when doing this it is clear imaging easy to read backgrounds the text is bold and clear make sure like we all love the fancy as hell text like Oh my gosh, this is great. This calligraphy text just gets my rocks off. Guaranteed it's not readable. Guaranteed. Blow it up on your screen. Walk away from your screen to the other side of the room. Can you read it then? No? Not a good text. Um, and it takes away a little bit of the frivol frivolity that we want to put in there and like some of the artsy nature that we like to build in. Build the artsy nature in your borders. Build the artsy nature in selecting really good clear photos of what you're doing. Um, build your artsy nature into like secondary images if you want to. But the, the upfront bold images, especially for shows, for reoccurring events, they should change on a regular basis so people look at them and wonder why they have changed. And for events, make sure that you're using the right format. Um, 16 by nine is the rough format of a Facebook page image for your title page. Um, you can look up, again, Google is your friend. Whatever platform you're using, look up the ratio you need to use. Update your image to make sure it matches that ratio so it doesn't cut things off because nothing will stop people from reading than a half line of text. So make sure that you're double checking that and it's a little frustrating and there is a little bit of a learning curve on it. Check it out, play, have fun. Uh, there's a ton of free um, programs out there. I'm gonna give you guys a couple and then you'll have six minutes of questions. Um, Canva.com is free. 
Uh, most kingdoms actually have a paid account. So if you're running an SEA specific thing, you can ask for the information. It's, this has free clip art, free text. It's super, it's plug and play. It's actually what I use for between two peers. It's what I used for most of the banners for service symposium. Um, and so it is a fantastic program that you can access for free. If you get the paid version, it's really cool, but the free version is good enough to get the job done. Uh, if you want to go super geeky, paint.net is a free version of paint shop pro um it, you can download it you can manipulate all your images if you're really really like into building layered images this is the program to use if you don't have adobe pro or like adobe suites and everything else like that you can get everything done with this go again go play around in it i really really like this program there's tons of tutorials online also um collage apps on your phone do you have a smartphone you can make a banner page that's it like it's super easy um you can find like go play with some of the photo editing apps most photo editing apps have a text edition they have a ratio um you can change the ratio of your picture um you can add other ones in most of like i can i can make a banner on uh it's it's called collage actually um it was a free program. I then paid the $2.99 a year access for all their extras. Um, and I use it all the time because I can, I can make, I can layer images on it and I can add text and put it to the right ratio and then send it to whoever needs to. Um, and so there's tons of free apps out there. Please, uh, if you need more of them, reach out to me after the class uh, and I will help you guys with that. But images are key to marketing your events. Uh, so with that one, uh, there's four minutes left. I'm happy. To, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the class right now. And then if you would like to okay, stay, oh, sorry, shit. Sorry. Um, if you yep. want to leave, if you want to bounce to your next class, please bounce to your next class. Um, I'm going to